Kylie. Welcome to the podcast. It is so awesome to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm really excited. Will and I have become obsessed with your books. Uh, (laughs) So we were so happy you decided to come on the show. And it's a perfect week to have you here because Nailed, Mm -hmm. which is the second book in Four Bears Construction, comes out this very week. Yes, on Friday. On Friday. So for those who have missed what we've been saying about this already (laughs) on the show, tell us a little bit about that series in general and then what we're going to get in this new installment. Yeah, so the Four Bears Construction series is a contemporary MM romance series, of course, focused around four best friends who own a construction company together. What I really always love about writing series is the whole, like, best friend found family aspect of, you know, all the characters who will go on to find their happily ever afters. And when I was kind of planning the series, what I had in mind mostly was a group of friends who are kind of these foul mouth, blue collar, average guys in their 40s finding love was kind of the concept that I had from the start before I started writing it. So, and then for Nailed, which is the second book in the series, like you said, it's an enemies to lovers. Stone, who is one of the owners of Four Bears Construction, bought a fixer-upper house. And pretty much from the minute his new neighbor sets eyes on him, he cannot stand him. (laughs) And Stone can't figure out why, but unlike a normal person who might try to butter that person up or anything like that, Stone decides it'll be a lot funnier and more fun to uh, just be the world's worst neighbor. So (laughs) it's a really, really funny, fun story. Very steamy moments, of course, all that good stuff. And basically, you know, Stone and his neighbor Dare going from enemies to uneasy friendship to finally finding their happily ever after together. How did you decide on construction for this? Actually, so I was driving. My parents used to live in Illinois last year, and I was driving to visit them, and I saw a sign for a company called Four Bears Construction. I was like, that's it. That is that is the series I'm writing next. <laughs> that's like the easiest plot buddy just plopped in your lap ever, maybe. <laughs> it was perfect. It was like a sign from above. <laughs> I wonder if they realized what they created when they put this sign <laughs> Right, I kind of feel like like looking them up on Google and sending them an email, like, just FYI, in case you want to read these books. <laughs> when you're tackling something like this, do you go into it? Are you are you the type that plans from the beginning to like, you know, Four Bears is going to have these four guys, and this is who the four guys are and who their four HEAs are going to be? It varies a little bit. So I did, for this one, I did go in planning all four. Like I came up with all the series titles. So I was like, all right, I need construction puns. That'll be really funny. I like came up with all those. And I, I kind of plotted out, you know, loosely all the guys and like kind of what I thought the trope for their stories might be. But pretty much like halfway through writing Cocky, I already had switched who two of the guys were going to end up with. <laughs> so uh, they do their own thing a lot. But I, I usually loosely plot a series before I start it if if I know it's going to be a series ahead of time. Just to kind of know where things are going, which is good. And then right, it's, right. It's, it's the fun yeah. of discovery from there. Exactly, yes. <laughs> then it's just me fighting with them, trying to keep it on track for, you know, four or five books, however long it goes. <laughs> so did you have to research for those construction <laughs> puns? Or did, did those just spill out of your head for you? Because, I mean, coffee's um... a pretty good... <laughs> Pretty great one and obviously nailed as well. Yep. So Cocky actually came to me long before I had the actual idea for this series. Like two years ago when that whole Cocky Gate thing was going on with Uh that one MF author who was like trying to trademark the word Cocky and titles. And I thought to myself, like, wouldn't that be really funny to have like a play on that? And I was super surprised that that's not already a book title. I was like, who's never thought of this? So I like jotted that down in my ideas notebook and just kind of put it aside. And then once I came up with the idea of doing this whole series of construction work, because I was like, perfect, it totally fits. But yeah, for the rest of it, it was actually surprisingly easy. I ended up with a lot more than I needed. So if I decide to have other books, I've already got titles on hand for them. (laughs) Super convenient that you can spin off four bears to other cities. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> they can bring on, you know, apprentices, whatever. <laughs> Where did the covers come from? Because I have to say that Cocky in particular, I mean, nailed top, yeah. but Cocky's one of the yeah. hottest covers I've seen, period. Right. 
<laughs> so usually I'm not like the kind of person who, you know, has to spend a thousand dollars on a cover photo or anything. Like I'm a stock photo girl, totally works for me. But I was looking through stock photo sites and I just couldn't find anything that felt right for these guys. So I contacted a photographer who I had worked with once way back in my MF days to ask if she had anything that would kind of fit this general idea of like, you know, sort of hairy, more like macho looking type guys. And she came through for me big time. <laughs> so, so yeah, she, that's, she's that doing is her, all four? Uh, Lin- yeah, she did all four. Uh, Lindy Robinson is the photographer's name. And then the covers themselves are done by Natasha Snow, who's done like all my covers. So she's fantastic. I love her. <laughs> Was there anything surprising in terms of the construction (laughs) setting as you were working through these first two books? So far, I've kind of kept the actual construction work a little bit on the lighter side. Like it's obviously referenced quite a bit and things like that. I've had to look up some terms and that kind of thing. But so it's like actually like on a work site I haven't done yet. So we'll see if that comes up in another book. I'm sure it probably will. I did end up watching uh, some YouTube videos about like remodeling bathrooms so that I kind of had an idea in cocky, like what would go into it when Cole was redoing the bathroom. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what I end up having to research for the rest of the series. <laughs> what can you tell us about the, the two books yet to come? Any teasers you can drop for us? Ooh, okay. So what I'm working on next, and that is going to be Everett's book, which is the third book in the Four Bear series. And that one is going to be, you've kind of seen hints of Everett in the first two books. And his is a, I guess, bisexual awakening is kind of the term, but I hesitate to use that because he knows he's not straight. He just hasn't explored that. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's in a place where he's worried that he's in his mid forties and is it too late to explore that now? So that's kind of the premise of that book. And I'm super excited. I'm going to be starting work on that one next week. I already have tons of ideas written down and everything. So that's that's the idea for that. And I'm really excited about it. And then Ali's book, of course, he needs his happily ever after. And that's going to be the fourth book in the series. Um, and I don't want to give too much away on that, but that's going to be really sweet, really sweet. He, he deserves it after his failed marriages. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get that HEA the first time. He'll get it the second. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> three failed marriages. He's earned it. <laughs> Do you want to drop hints on, on, on titles? Yeah. I don't think. Do I want to do that? I guess I could. Um, so the third book is called Hardwood. And I've got, I already have the hook written for the blurb. It's hilarious. I'm not going to share that though, but keep an eye out for that because I'm very proud of that one that came to me. I had to share it with my husband right away. He laughed. Good stuff. <laughs> and then the fourth book, Ali's book, is called Screwed. Screwed. I would expect yeah. a screwed in there. Hardwood though. That's yep, a good yep. one. <laughs> So I've got to ask about the Love Logic series too, because that's what I was reading while Will was doing Four Bears, and I fell. I'll, I'll do anything that's like a nerd geek sort of thing, and yeah. you gave me the perfect nerd. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where did all that come from? What's the origin of, of you know, first of all, rocket science, and then moving into the recently <laughs> released Four Letter Word. Yeah, so rocket science was an idea I'd been kicking around for quite a while. Actually, I mean, honestly, I was thinking about this book back in my MF days. Just I was thinking about it as an MF book, of course, back then. Just a sort of a general idea that I had of this awkward virgin who moves to a new city and the only person he knows is his best friend's brother, who he's had a crush on his whole life. Of course, it was, you know, sister back then, you know. (laughs) revised it once I moved into the MM world. So this was kind of one of those like little plot bunnies I'd been feeding and petting and loving for years without actually doing any work on it. (laughs) And then um, one day I came across a pre-made cover in Natasha Snow's cover group. And it was, I was like, it's perfect. That is my nerd lit. Like I need that cover and I'm going to start working on this story now. So that was kind of where that all came from. And it was planned completely as a standalone. But then my side characters never let that be. So, <laughs> Well, it's it's insane reading it, knowing yeah. that it was supposed to be a standalone because yeah. it those side characters are so vivid that yeah. it's hard they to take on a life of their own of it without it being a series. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, and even as far as four letter word, I did not when that first idea came to me, that was not supposed to be a 4M book but 
<laughs> once I started kind of working on it and like thinking about who those guys were, who Bishop and Hudson were, and this like weird tumultuous relationship that they have, the other characters came out of the woodwork, Leo and Riot, they came out of the woodwork and surprised me. And I just, I love how that story turned out. <laughs> I cannot imagine having to handle four people. <laughs> No. <clears throat> what was that like? Trying, I mean, just from pronouns alone. Yeah, it it was tough. Honestly, I think that my PA probably got sick of me while I was writing that book because, like, every week I was like, I'm I'm quitting. I'm getting two of these guys like get in the boot. <laughs> this is never gonna work. Um, it, it was very difficult because, especially when you read the book, it really is written almost as five separate relationships. It's not like all four guys come together and build this one relationship. It's it's five relate. Wait, more than five. However many every relationship. I can't do that math. A, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's every relationship is like its own relationship. So it was really like writing, you know, five or six or how many books at once, bringing all these characters together. So it was difficult, but it was also a really fun challenge. So I liked that about it. Was there anything in particular that might have surprised you in that book as you were combining all this together? Because beyond pronouns, that's just, that's a lot of individual <laughs> threads to keep up with, too. When we're yes. used to primarily, you know, your two primary characters, maybe a couple people on the side. Right, right. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, all their friends are still there. So there's still other people in the story. I think the thing that surprised me the most writing it was was Hudson's character, like in rocket science, he's kind of a dick. I don't, can I say that on your podcast? Okay, good. You can, and I'll totally agree with you that he was. <laughs> <laughs> but there's this whole other side to him that comes out. Like once you start getting in his head and having his point of view on stuff, it was it was a lot of fun because I did not expect that from him. I was like, okay, I'm not really sure I'm going to redeem this guy. <laughs> but he did most of the work for me, so I appreciated that. <laughs> Would you tr tackle this kind of relationship in a book again, having now done it once? Ooh, I think it would have to be the right book for sure. Like I said, I, I didn't go into this initially, like planning for it to be a 4M. So I think, I mean, if my characters in the future decided that was what they need again, I'll go along for the ride. But I'm not sure that I would intentionally do this to myself. It's going to be interesting to hear how it manifests in audio yes. too, because there's going yeah, to be... I'm, I'm really curious. Potentially more people scene to scene to scene than you would normally have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious to see how uh, Zachary Zaba does with it. I'm looking forward to it for sure. We're all looking at you, Zachary. So right. <laughs> we'll see how that turns out. <laughs> what would you say the trademark of a KM Newhold book is? Yeah, I would say definitely a lot of humor, a lot of emotion. Sometimes a lot of the books are heavier, but there's also quite a few that are just sort of schmoopy, sweet emotion. Definitely plenty of heat. And of course, there's always guys with tattoos. <laughs> you know, that's the thing I noticed <laughs> too, looking at like Rocket Science mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. Replay series. Yeah. There's, the angst levels are much different. Yes, um, yeah. <laughs> Does that keep things fresh and interesting for you as, as an author to kind of yeah. pivot back and forth that way and not just keep maybe moving down like a category romance level of sweetness or something? Yeah, it definitely does. My more angsty books, I think in a lot of ways I have a lot of fun writing those because the emotions are so deep, but it can be so heavy that I always need to write something light after that because otherwise it's just it's too much. It kind of weighs me down a little bit too much. So I, I definitely like to mix it up. And, you know, with everything going on in the world right now, I'm really glad that I pretty much planned this whole year for really, like, light, funny, pretty much no angst books. <laughs> because I don't, I don't think I'm going to want any angst for a little while. <laughs> and that was one of the things I like so much about <laughs> Rocket Science, too, is mm -hmm. even the, you know, the dark moment where theoretically <laughs> all is lost. Mm -hmm. It wasn't super heavy. I mean, it was there yeah. and they were broken, but it wasn't like mm -hmm. the way the world fell at the same time. Right, right. So, yeah. yeah, well, the book I, I had written immediately before Rocket Science was a super heavy book um, that I absolutely loved. But Change of Heart was 
it, it weighed me down quite a bit. So I was like, nothing dark is going to happen in rocket science. It's going to be super light. All the problems are going to be solved easily. <laughs> <laughs> easy, easy. Yeah, sometimes yes. that's just what you need is the writer and the reader. Right, right. And you work with so many types of guys. You got your mm -hmm. nerds and the construction workers and the porn stars and yep. the tattoo artists and the rock stars. Mm -hmm. Is there a type that you haven't done yet that you're like, I want to do something with this, but you haven't figured it out yet? Um, I'm not really sure. It's something, you know, I, I saw the questions that we had for this and I was trying to think about it. And I don't know off the top of my head, like what kind of guys I want to tackle after these series are done. I'll probably just let them come to me and tell me. <laughs> you're going to see them on the billboard some... somewhere. And... Right, exactly. There'll be another <laughs> billboard somewhere. Like, I have some ideas. I know a couple of series that I probably want to tackle next year, but I don't know for sure, like, what the characters will necessarily be like yet. And why always tattoos? I'm obsessed with tattoos. <laughs> yes, I, I've got um, quite a few of my own, and I've always been attracted to people with tattoos, so... I always find that that's when I'm thinking like, what's an attractive person look like in my mind? Tattoos are always on the list. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. <Yep. laughs> what do you think started that just out of curiosity? Uh, I don't really know. I, as long as I can remember, I've always just thought the tattoos look really awesome. Like I love the, the artistry of a lot of tattoos. So mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. Just one of those things, I guess. <laughs> I kind of like that. How it always, yeah. you know, it's just always there somewhere. Right, right. <laughs> did you enjoy, you must have really enjoyed writing the tattoo artist books. Then. I did, yes, yes. And that was another one, like I had, I had had the idea that I was definitely going to do a tattoo artist series. I was still writing in MF and I kind of had this idea for a series. And then I switched over to MM and I was like, this will work perfectly. Like I could totally plot this out as an MM series and it worked a lot better for all the guys too. <laughs> And, and yeah, it was something I always thought of because I always love the vibe inside a tattoo studio when you're there getting a tattoo. This like, they talk shit to each other. There's always like a crude joke, uh, music playing. Like, so I, always ha I had that kind of feeling of a tattoo parlor in my mind while I was writing the series. Mm -hmm. And of course here we're, we're talking about Heathen Zinc yeah. for those who don't yes, know. Yes, Heathen Zinc, yes. <laughs> It occurred to me I hadn't actually said yeah. what that was. People would be like, what? <laughs> and that's like your longest series to date. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That one's pretty long. And then there's the spinoff Inked series, which is another three books. So all told, it's 10 books for that universe. What yeah. kept bringing you back? Just the guys in the tattoo scenario or something else? Yeah, I, I think so. It was one of those situations where every time I thought I was going to be done, another side character popped up and kind of pulled me in. So I just, I wasn't ready to leave that universe quite yet. And I think now Unexpected was the third in the Ink series that I published at the end of December last year. And I, I feel like I'm done with that universe now, but I guess we'll see. Something might pop up again in the future. <laughs> It's still fresh. So right, right. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we'll see what happens. Right, right. <laughs> Do you have favorite tropes that you like to, to play with? Yes. My absolute favorite trope is best friends to lovers. I really love that because it's, it's the feeling that like they already love each other, but it's going to be so much deeper once they discover what else there is between them. That, and I really love, I've written a couple of books where the they're already in an established relationship when the book starts. And the same kind of thing, like I love just seeing how deep that love can go as things unfold. Yeah, there's just something about friends because they've got so much of that yeah. shared background. Right, yeah, the shared background, the like sexual tension that neither of them want to ruin the friendship with, like it's, it's all good. <laughs> Similar to the type of guy question, is there a trope that you want to you know, do something with that you haven't yet? I would say I definitely have it on my list that I would like to explore M-Preg possibly at some point, or at least Omegaverse. I don't know, like the pregnancy part doesn't necessarily appeal to me, but the rest of, of the Omegaverse does. So I, I think I might dip my toe into that maybe uh, next year or so, just kind of see how it goes. Okay, because I... I don't remember seeing really any paranormal either. So that would be... No. Well, I, I did do uh, one book that was co-authored with Michelle Nataro. That's kind of a horror, somewhat paranormal. There's ghosts and demons. So I guess, yeah, paranormal. 
<laughs> that we wrote in 2018. So tiny bit. <laughs> you dipped your toe. Yes, and exactly. That'd be, that'd be Alaska Sanatorium. Yes. Yep. Yep. Did you enjoy co-authoring? Yes, I do. I, I write a lot of books with Nora Phoenix as well. We have a full series, the Ballsy Boy series, and we're working on a spin-off, the Kinky Boys now. Nice. So definitely, yeah, done quite a bit of co-authoring. It, it's a challenge, but it's also fun. So it's, yeah. <laughs> and of course, you know, Nora knows everything about Impreg and, and Omegaverse. So you, yes, can, you, yes. you could at least get, <laughs> you know, get some help from one of the best there. Right. Ab absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Do you want to co-write more or are you are you happiest running solo? I would say for the most part, I, I'm a little bit happier writing solo just because I, I'm the kind of person like any amount of stress totally throws off my writing game. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, have just even knowing that someone else is waiting for a scene from me kind of throws me off a little bit. So it, it is always fun to co-write with her because I like that immediate feedback. You know, she reads the scene that I wrote right away and vice versa. That's fun. And getting to brainstorm as we go is a lot of fun, too. But overall, definitely, I, I think solo is uh, preferable for me. Now, you mentioned you, you've you written MF also. What mm -hmm. got you started writing in MM? Yeah, so when I started in MF, I didn't even know MM existed. I had never heard of this, you know, subgenre of romance before. I started reading MF when I was a teenager and, and started writing it in my early 20s. And it, it didn't take me too long after publishing my first few that I realized that the kind of men that I like to write really didn't fit what MF readers like. MF readers really, really love the alpha male asshole, as I like to put it. <laughs> like the kind of guy who's going to tell you, like, don't you dare go to the bar in that short skirt. <laughs> That kind of stuff. And that just has never appealed to me. So, you know, as, as you've read a lot of my books, like, yes, I can write tough guys, things like that. But usually at the core, they're kind of these like sweet, nice guys. Mm -hmm. And that's really not very popular in MF. So not only was I not getting a lot of traction with my writing career in MF, I was finding myself getting really bored of reading books in MF. Um, I still loved the romance aspect, but I was just like, this is you know, I feel like I'm reading the same thing over and over, the same kind of guy, the same kind of, you know, formulaic plot line. And I stumbled on my first MM book, which was Line Mates by Van Barrett, which is a super hot hockey romance. Love the <laughs> and hockey romance. As, <laughs> yep. <laughs> and as soon as I fell down that rabbit hole, I was like, this is it. This is where I belong. I, did, I knew right away because it, it's the community around MM. Like, they're welcoming of all different kinds of characters, you don't have to feel like you're so much in a box of like, I have to write it exactly like this. You know, they have to break up at the 80% mark and then have a grand gesture to get back together. And like MM readers just, they love it all. They're open to different things. And that really appealed to me as a writer. And so I fell in love with the community, with the genre, um, and never looked back. <laughs> That's awesome. Any any yeah. chance of a KM Newhold hockey book somewhere in the future? <laughs> No, I'd love I, to see my, what you do with a hockey player. <laughs> my high school boyfriend was a hockey player, so I always have like a little bit of a weird association with hockey okay, players. Fair enough. <laughs> but I mean, definitely not ruling it out. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see. <laughs> what got you started writing in general? You mentioned you started writing in your 20s with the MF yeah. romances. Yeah, well, writing to publish, I guess I should have said in my 20s. I've pretty much been writing most of my life. In high school and in middle school, I was really into writing like high fantasy, like young adult, Lord of the Rings slash, you know, whatever kind of stories. I, you know, I was writing pretty much as soon as I learned how to put sentences together. I was always kind of like a kid who liked to daydream a lot, and it didn't take very long before I realized that it's even more fun when you write them down. So <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Yeah, it is more fun when you write them down, because then other it people is. can read them. <laughs> right, right. Then you can go back, like, oh, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> We've mentioned a little bit about the four bears that are coming up mm -hmm. next. What else is kind of on <laughs> your upcoming things to do? Yeah, so this year I pretty much have planned um, getting the whole Four Bears series out before the end of the year, and also the Love Logic series will should be all out by the end of the year. I've got two more books planned in that series. 
Alex and Theo are going to get a book. And then for anyone who did read Four Letter Word, you'll recognize there's a very sweet baker who pops up. And as soon as, again, another side character who he just stole the scene as soon as he popped up, I was like, well, he's going to need a happily ever after. So <laughs> so definitely two more books in that series. And then the Kinky Boy series that I'm working on with Nora Phoenix, we're going to keep working on that this year, too. Nice. So it sounds like maybe yes. another, what, four or five books before the end of the year. Oh, yeah. Lots of, yeah, still a lot of books before the end of the year. <laughs> we'll see as long as I get through <laughs> I had an ambitious schedule at the beginning of the year, so we'll see how far I get with it. <laughs> Fingers crossed, because I know I want yeah. the Love Logic books, and I know Will yeah. wants the Four Bears books. So. <laughs> what is the best way for everyone to keep up with you online? Yeah, so if you're on Facebook, definitely the best place to find me is my reader group, uh, New Holds Nerds, which is super fun. I share lots of teasers and insight into my writing process and my husband does live videos and, and all kinds of fun stuff like that. And if you're not on Facebook, then you can go to my website, authorkmnewhold.com, and, and you'll find my email, my mailing list, all that good stuff. Fantastic. Well, Kylie, yeah. thank you so much for talking to us. This has yeah. been awesome. Can't yeah, wait to keep reading more books. Yes, thank you so much. 